what fuels the tremendous diversity in the main channel of the Mississippi River? It's this floodplain uh, that's uh, seasonally connected. And that's one reason we still have high species richness, uh, no extirpation or extinction of species, uh, and, and just a fine, wonderful area to, uh, to work and play in. And we're out here uh, sampling uh, year two of our ecohydrology study, where we're trying to merge our ecological sampling with the uh, study of the connectivity of the river with its floodplain in terms of its hydrology. So we call that ecohydrology. And um, we've just completed year one of this, of this study, sort of a pilot study. And we use the Island 63 reach, the 20 miles below Island 63, as our test reach um, for lots of reasons. First, there's lots of extant data for this area. The Memphis District has collected a lot of bathymetric data and um, there's been a lot, uh, there's comprehensive LIDAR data, elevation data for this area. So we have a GIS expert that was able to merge some of those files and come up with a, a full scale elevation model that we could use to track the river stage, to tie the river stage into the movement of the water into the floodplain. And that way we could, we could figure out how to measure connectivity in these water bodies. And then we go in as, our, as the fish team, we come in and we sample fishes and macroinvertebrates seasonally to look at which species are using these different types of connected water bodies at what time of the year. The lower Mississippi River floodplain is about two million acres. Uh, if you look from levee to levee, it can be up to 14 miles in width. Where we're standing right now, for example, are in areas of two cutoffs. Uh, where the Corps went in there and cut off bendways to shorten the river. Uh, they didn't isolate the, uh, the cutoffs. They made sure that they were still connected to the river, and that's why you get this 13, 14 mile wide floodplain uh, with uh, sandbars and gravel bars and backwater sloughs and large floodplain lakes. They're still intact. They're still connected to the river on a seasonal basis, and they are highly functional in ter terms of its ecological value. Water quality is very important to our study for several reasons. Uh, one is that uh, we are studying what we would call nutrient sequestration in the backwaters. So as the nutrients are coming down in the Mississippi River into the Gulf, creating Gulf hypoxia, uh, our question is how much of, that, of those nutrients, in particular nitrogen, uh, is removed in the backwaters, in the wetlands, in the batcher, before the river then, before that water goes back out into the channel and down to the Gulf of Mexico. Again, it's a reason to, keep, to maintain connectivity between the river and the floodplain, not only to allow fish and other aquatic organisms to move between the two, but also to help improve nutrient reduction and increase uh, overall primary productivity, uh, which really sustains the, the, the biodiversity of the lower Mississippi River. The Great Flood of 2011, which in many places was actually larger than the uh, 1927 flood, again uh, raised people's interest in the Mississippi River. And so following the 2011 flood, um, the Mississippi Valley Division uh, requested funding to basically restore or to come back up with a potomology program and it's called the Mississippi River Geomorphology and Potomology Program um, and it has several work units. Uh, one of them is the geomorphic assessment, understanding how the river has changed over time. What are the historical changes? What are the um, changes in water level? What's the changes in geology? How does geology control things? Um, we have elements on um, addressing particular issues that appeared during the flood, particular areas where the river almost cut off again, that we needed to understand why it would do that, uh, whether it could be prevented, and what would be the implications if it had. And then another very important component is what we call the eco-hydrology uh, work unit, where um, we're not only just trying to understand the ecology of the system, but we're trying to understand the relationships between the hydrology and the habitat available in the uh, river floodplain, particularly within the Batcher areas, that area in between the levees of the Mississippi River. We're trying to better understand how management changes over the last 150 years perhaps has changed those habitats. And if we 
uh, embark upon restoration activities, how can we best use those resources to provide the types of habitat for the types of organisms um, that, that we believe that the river today can, um, can support and uh, can contribute to the overall ecology of the uh, system. There's an amazing amount of habitat associated with the Mississippi River. People kind of have this idea that the Mississippi River is a concrete pipe um, to, from you know, Canada to the Gulf of Mexico. I think the emphasis in the last 10 to 15 years is to find ways to um, provide the nation the important uh, values of navigation and flood control while simultaneously um, providing for the environment and for the ecology of the river.